In order to figure out how to wire up the Lumineer Lux F7, I could go download the user manual from Lumineer, and Lumineer's written a very detailed, easy to understand quick start manual for this flight controller that tells all the ways that you might wire it up, but I'm just going to try to figure it out on my own. And um, yeah, so let's just have a look. And what we want to start with is the UART that we're going to use for our receiver. Now, because we're using a FreeSky receiver and the receiver we're going to be using here, this is the HobbyMate micro FPV receiver. It's a new receiver from HobbyMate, supports FreeSky D16 protocol. And one cool thing about it is it has built-in RSSI output right there in the plug header. So we're going to be wiring that up as well. We're gonna need two UARTs, one for SBUS and one for smart port. And it might be a little confusing to some folks because SBUS uses a receive pad and smart port uses a transmit pad. So couldn't we use the same UART? Use the TX pad one way and the RX pad the other way? Well, it turns out it doesn't work that way. The reason it doesn't work that way is because SBUS and smart port use a different baud rate and the TX and the RX pins of a UART have to use the same baud rate. So we need two UARTs next to each other, and we're just going to take a look here and see if the board designer has given us any clues as to where the board designer might have intended us to wire up the receiver. We could just look in the freaking manual, but that's that's too easy. I'm going to do it the hard way. I like to figure things out. Now we're going to need a 5-volt pad as well. Let's see here. Here's the camera inputs, 5-volt ground. Here's the signal inputs at the corners. Those are intended for the motors, and of course, we're going to be using the 4-in-1 plug, so we won't worry about those. Here's the camera header. Let's assume that UART 4 is going to be used for camera remote control, if we're using digital camera remote control, because it's right here. Let's see here. T2, R2, 5-volt ground. That could be, but we don't have another UART handy. That that's that's one UART. Let's see. T6 R6 current sensor. Yeah. What about on the underside? What do we got? Here's the VTX. And here is UART 3, which is presumably going to be used for VTX remote control like smart audio. Where's the receiver going to go? Aha, well, yeah, you can see I've started thinking about this already. Here is UART 1, but there's no other UART handy here. The alternative, maybe, is there's something on top of the board that we could use. Yes, that's how we're going to do it. So we're going to do UART 2 TX on top of the board for smart port, and UART 1 RX on the bottom of the board, and that means the wires from the receiver will come back to the same place and be close together and not have to just stretch a wire all the way across the board. That's the way to do it. And for smart port, it's going to go to T2, UART2, TX. And finally, there's an RSSI pad here on the Luminar Lux F7. And this one is for analog RSSI input, which many receivers don't have, but the HobbyMate does. And we're going to use the green RSSI wire for that. The advantage of that is that you don't have to give up an aux channel to get your RSSI in the OSD. Um, on many of the FreeSky receivers, if you want to get RSSI in the OSD, and Crossfire too, as, as, it, as it would be, you, you got to give up an aux channel. At least on the micro, on the nano Crossfire receiver you do. you got to use an aux channel for that function, whereas if you have analog RSSI in the receiver, you can solder the RSSI pad, and uh, then you don't give up the aux channel. That's great. And now the receiver is wired up. And this is how you would do a FreeSky receiver. SBUS on R1, smart port on T2, and then power and ground and RSSI. This same method would be used for a Spectrum receiver, but you wouldn't have the separate smart port telemetry. Um, and for IBUS, it would be the same. For IBUS, you would have just the RX pad, not the TX. How does IBUS telemetry work? 
I don't actually know the answer to that. If you're doing Crossfire, you would do UART1, TX, and RX to the IO1 and IO2 pins on the Crossfire receiver, and that would free up UART2 for some other function. With FreeSky, you're going to use two UARTs if you want both telemetry and the receiver. All right, so here's two cameras that we're going to use uh, on the quad. Just grab two cameras off a shelf from an older build, and we need got two uh, camera wires. Now if we look here, we've got camera one and camera two. We do not have separate five volt, etc. Looks like these are made to power the camera off five volt. There's only one five volt and ground pad, so we're gonna need to combine the power and ground. That's no big deal. Do we have the option for a, here's VBAT on the other side. And that's original. that's intended for the VTX, but we can easily power the cameras off VBED as well. We're going to need the VTX. Mm. It's kind of a toss up whether you get better video with the camera powered off 5 volt, which is more filtered, but a lower input voltage. Some cameras do better off a higher input voltage, and I like to power them off VBED. We'll do it the way the board designer probably intended, which is to power the camera off 5 volt and then the VTX off VBED. If we get any video noise problems or anything, we'll switch it up and we'll do it a different way. two different cameras can hook up here. And then the last thing we need to do is hook up the VTX and we can demonstrate this wonderful system. Boom, we're back. Out of focus. Hello, and welcome to Movie Phone. I'm back, it's uh, tomorrow, as you can tell by the fact that I changed my shirt. Um, Basement cat, get out of here. Get out of here. Go. Go away. Go away. Go away. Still go. Keep going. Maintain with the going. Go. Go. There you go. Get out of here. Go away. Thank you, basic cat. The VTX we're going to be using here is the Rush Tank VTX. Um, Rush, I've been doing some testing on this. Uh, that Those results will come out another day. Uh, and the Rush Tank, let's look at the pinout here. And uh, we've got DC and ground. That's presumably the power supply. So we would want to check and we would want to see what the rated input voltage is for this. A lot of times the VTX will just say five, seven to 26 volts or whatever. In this case, it just says DC. So we would want to make sure that we're giving it a voltage that's in the acceptable range. But uh, I'm pretty sure we're fine at whatever 4S voltage that we're using here. Then we've got SA, which is going to be Smart Audio. And Smart Audio on this VTX has a dedicated pin. Does it have a microphone? I don't see a microphone. It doesn't mean it doesn't have one. It could be under this heat shield. Um, a lot of modern VTXs will have a built-in microphone, and then they'll have a separate Smart Audio wire that you use to connect to the flight controller, in case you're not aware. Smart Audio lets the flight controller change the video transmitter channel and power so you don't have to click buttons, although this guy does have conveniently located buttons for changing those things if you prefer to do it with buttons. So we've got Smart Audio. We've got an additional ground and then the video wire. Of course, the video wire is gonna be coming, in this case, from the flight controller, not from the camera. I wanna take one second and say, have you noticed that I haven't looked at the manual for any of these products yet? That is a skill that you can learn and it, manuals are great, but a lot of times products in this hobby don't have great manuals or you're maybe you're out at the field or somewhere where you don't have an easy way to find the manual or the pinout for, for a device. If you know what you're doing, if you know what to look for, you can figure out with some degree of consistency what these, how to wire up these devices. I have a playlist talking about how to do that, how to see the code behind the matrix and just pick up a VTX or a flight controller, look at the pinout and go, okay, mm, this is where I'm going to put all the wires. And that, v, uh, that is my 
flight controller wiring for beginners playlist, which is linked down in the video description. And you could definitely, I think everybody who gets into this hobby should watch that whole playlist because it just gives this great foundation of knowledge about all of the pads and pins that you're going to see on flight controllers, ESCs, and, and all of the common ways that you wire them up. And then you can just look at it and go, okay, yeah, I see how this needs to go. Okay, so here's the VTX pad. Then we have to, th so that's where our video wire to the VTX is going to go. Then we have to ask where are we going to power it from? And well, here's VBAT. So our flight, con our, our um, video transmitter can handle VBAT. So we're going to use VBAT. Sometimes you'll run a video transmitter off a regulated supply, but uh, I usually run it off of VBAT and, and hope that the filtering in the VTX is good enough. I find that uh, an insufficient voltage regulator can make more problems than the noise you get from running directly off of VBAT. So we're going to run this off VBAT at least at first. So VTX ground VBAT and then for smart audio we're going to need a UART and the T3 pad is conveniently located right here. There you go. Hey there folks, real quick apology for the audio from here to the end of the video. I lost the audio on my good microphone and I'm using the audio from the GoPro. I've cleaned it up as best I can and I hope it's not too bad, but if it sounds a little cruddy, that's why. Now that you've got your receiver working and when you move the sticks, the channels all move, the next thing to do is to set up these aux modes. And we're going to do that. We're just going to pick a spare aux channel and what we'll do is we'll hit menu, page, page, page to the mixer screen. We're going to pick a channel that is not being used. So you can see here channel 5 is being used by switch SF. That's probably my arming switch. I'm not 100%. I don't remember how this model is set up. So I'm going to just pick an unused channel. I'm going to long press enter and that'll get me to a new mix. And then I'm going to go down to the source, highlight it. I'm going to press enter one time and I'm going to flip the switch that I want to use to turn my VTX on and off and it will fill that switch in as the source. And then if you look in your receiver tab, you'll see in aux two, it moving when I flip that switch. And that's what you need to see. You need to see that flipping the switch is controlling the receiver channel, aux two. Then we're gonna go to the modes tab and we're gonna scroll down till we find user one mode. And that's the mode that Luminaire has defined to turn the VTX on and off. I'm going to hit add range and then as I flip that switch you'll see that it will auto fill aux 2 here. If it doesn't auto fill you're just going to pick aux 2 or whatever the channel was that you selected and you should see that as you flip that switch this little yellow indicator moves showing the switch position. Now what Luminaire has told us is that VBAT off is the low position, VBAT on is all other positions. So we'll put the switch, here we go, we'll drag that down there to be VBAT off and hit save. And what you should see is that when you flip that switch, watch the VTX here, VTX turns on and off. Oh, so good, so good, <laughs> I love it. And we're going to do that same thing for camera one and camera two, and I'm not going to walk you through every single step because you just saw how to do it. We're just going to pick a different aux channel, and we're going to use that to switch between camera two and camera one. So having set up the switch in the Tyrannus mixer, I'm going to add a user two mode. I'm going to drag it to the top, and I'm going to hit save. And oh, we need to change that to aux three. That's the channel we selected. Okay. What we should see now is... Camera one and camera two. Aha! Wee! Wee! Now, <laughs> it's so, that's so hot. Now, if you have a rapid fire like I do, you're going to want to set your rapid fire to legacy mode in the menu. In rapid fire mode one and two, it locks on to the sync pulses, and when you switch cameras, it the sync doesn't line up and it gets confused, and you actually get garbled video for a second. In rapid fire legacy mode, you should be able to switch cameras immediately and have it, uh-huh. Well, it still glitches slightly, but it's doing better than it was. That is so freaking cool. So freaking cool. That's going to do it, guys, for this setup guide to the Lumineer Lux F7. Now you know how to turn the VTX on and off and switch cameras on that Lux F7 Ultimate just by flipping switches on your transmitter. That's so cool. I cannot wait to see more flight controllers with these features 
hopefully coming out soon. And kudos to uh, Maytek and to Luminear for being, I think, the first to do certainly the camera switching built into the flight controller. And that's going to do it for this video as well. If this video helped you out, if you learned something, or if I entertained you or made you laugh or groan, <laughs> let me remind you this is my full-time job, and uh, it certainly does help me out when you guys use the affiliate links down in the video description. I got to go because somebody's coming over to my house to look at the floor. Okay, later. I got to get out of here. End of the video. Bye-bye.